yeah, because clothes for kids would be on toddler mannequins. Also, that's technically, that's not a toddler, that's just a child. Like, in my mind, a toddler is someone who's, like, like a, a, a year or two old. Oh no, colors. Oh no, bad. This is stuff that he's getting angry about. Rainbows on shirts, this is what pisses him off. So, the NIFB, or the New Independent Fundamental Baptists, always come up in some kind of discourse. And as it is the first day of Pride Month, at least, you know, while, while I'm recording, not necessarily when this goes live, it's probably important to go over some of the crap that they've been saying. Uh, or at least some of the, uh, the ways that their resources are being utilized. I've got an interesting one to show you guys today, but first... Let's get into the fan art section. The first piece of fan art we have today is from Jazzy Cat. Uh, there is, it says, my first uh, Cirrus fan art ever. I've been watching for years, but never gotten to fan art before. My confidence in humans and complicated designs is lacking, but I drew this last night in sudden inspiration while watching the channel. I'm also planning on digitalizing it at some point. Well, I do love when Slime Cirrus designs come in because he's just he's just fucking cute. Slime Cirrus is adorable, I'm willing to say it, even if he causes apocalypse whenever he pops out of the bottle. The next one we have here uh, may take me a little bit of time to get through, but it is from a uh, user who submitted fan art before called Mish Monster. That one is right here. Let me go ahead and zoom in all the way on it for you guys. It said, uh, so she says, look, I made a whole chan, but on a serious note, I pray for those we lost, for my friends and family gone, for those who are struggling with mental illness or those that are overlooked. For you reading this right now, I have nothing but love for you. I know what it's like to be there. I don't want anyone to suffer uh, and it sucks that we have bullshit systems and bullshit laws. The fact that many have lost everything, including their lives, to the greedy hands of capitalism, to the religions that don't accept everyone equally, that would force people to be so lost and unloved and overlooked, to be exiled from family or public places, to be so alone in darkness with no way out, to have no help. We are lost, but the mo uh, but we more than ever need to stand together. No one should have to fight to be treated with basic human rights. And of course, there is an entire deluge here for you to read if you would like, saying don't put your mental on a shelf, stray away from those who tell you not to be your authentic self, you are loved, you are worthy of life, you deserve kindness and happiness, we know your strife. When our hearts are blocked and our spirits feel locked and you just want to die, don't end it all, I feel your pain as you cry. When we are lost, when you are lost in your head and need to fall apart, remember you have a place in my heart. Honestly, after what we got to cover today, that is more profound than you think. And thank you very much, Mish, for dropping that on us. I've also uh, messaged Mish as well to get permission to use the entirety of the quote uh, before on the Discord and on here, just in case. Thank you for that one. Also, Naomi... Thank you so much for the raid. How was your stream? The parts of it that I wasn't part of. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? We're about to cover the NIFB and some of their propaganda that they use to try to argue against LGBTQ people. So, hello. How are you doing? Berserk Jerk uh, said they dodged a, a gosh darn bullet. Oh, no, no. The bullet is here. We are starting with topics right now. The fun time is happening now. How are we doing, everybody? Can we get a shout-out for Nominal Naomi real quick? Any of my mods, uh, Gainer, if you can take care of that, or Ivana, either of ya, I would greatly appreciate it. So let's get into things. So the NIFB, for those who don't know, are the New Independent Fundamental Baptists. They are an offshoot of the old IFB, uh, the Independent Fundamental Baptists. If you think of the Hellfire and Brimstone preacher that tells you that the gays are all burning in hell, these are them. This is, this is what they are. Most people think about the Westboro Baptist Church, but truth be told, the Westboro Baptist Church is actually only a small part of this greater network of phobes. So... 
Contaminated Beast, thank you very much for the follow. The reason I say that, the Westboro Baptist Church is a single church. The NIIFB is in multiple countries. They have over 30 churches in the United States alone, not counting the multiple churches they have in places like Australia and other countries. In fact, the leader of this cult, Steven Anderson, is actually banned in multiple countries, 34 of them to be exact. If you don't believe me, look up Steven Anderson Rule 34. But while you go and traumatize yourself with that, let's go ahead and get into what's happening here. How did I discover this? Well, I was going through Twitter. So the country's just not banned from anyway. I was going through Twitter, and as I was running through, I found this tweet here. Boop. This one right here uh, from Benny Johnson going, Target is lying to you. We removed satanic items, and yet they're here. So I, I, I covered this one. I covered the Target stuff, right? How... Actually, also Tunic Potnet and Contaminated Beast, thank you both for the follows. And Lantern, Lantern, Lantern! No, why? <sighs> Lantern has dropped over 200,000 channel points. All audible cues are now turned into, into, oh, was now. I'm, I'm, I'm so tired. I'm so tired. Why? Why are you like this? Why do we have to do this? Why do you subject me to this? Go outside, touch grass, get away from my streams. You watch too much to have that many channel points to just throw at me. But for the next hour, so until 9.25 p.m. Eastern, I guess I'll be stuck in this mode. You assholes. So, going over this... <clears throat> going over this, uh, dude is one of many who's freaking out about targets and having pride displays. Just walked into the door... You've heard that there's a backlash and that Target's made some real changes uh, to their very aggressive pride display uh, this year. And you have been lied to, actually. Because right here at the very front of the building, there you go. There's your little, little toddler mannequin. And it gets better. Yeah, because clothes for kids would be on toddler mannequins. Also, that's technically, that's not a toddler. That's just a child. Like, in my mind, a toddler is someone who's, like, like a, a, a year or two old. Oh, no. Colors. Oh, no. Bad. This is stuff that he's getting angry about. Rainbows on shirts. This is what pisses him off. These people are giant snowflakes. But the reason that we're covering this is not because of Benny Boy. Benny Boy is a symptom. Let's go to some of the people who are being part of the source of this problem. So, when Hassan decided to point out that, like, hey, Ben is gay, by the way. This person here, council member, chief scholar, decided to go, it's not about who's gay or not. It's about the overwhelming abundance of pedos that ga in that gaggle. Anyone can run the numbers and see the math's just not adding up. Therefore, anyone defending children must put down the ego in need for validation and understand that they cannot be allowed to purchase children legally. They're talking about adoption, by the way. That's what this is. This tweet is talking about. It's talking about adoption. It said banning gay people is about tearing down the easy path for these creeps to purchase children legally. Huh? What? What? Why? How does that make any fucking sense? This is how we know that... Hashtag against groomers are not a serious organization. They do not take the mission serious. They only care about their public image. Also, what the crap? Thank you for redeeming your points, but it got converted because of the nuke, so... Oh, well. Jesus fucking Christ. Yes, you pay for adoption. Adoption can cost up to $40,000. Adoption is very expensive. Uh, Black Treeing, thank you very much for the follow as well. I appreciate you. Uh, Melody Starflare, I don't know why you would get on board with this, but you... Your points got converted as well to a to a fucking so that was the word those words those words Ooh, whoa. can 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 you all stop now can you all stop now please thank you I'm trying to talk about I'm trying to talk about bigots and here you are ruining my life Gainer thank you for the posture check I do need to do that. They go around town plastering stickers, recruiting members into their, quote, disgusting cult, when in reality, they should be advocating for bans, seeing how they know that there's a sick and vile problem in that community. So they think that gays against groomers should be advocating for banning gay people? All right. Mr. 
council member chief scholar with your blue verified check mark. I miss when this check mark meant that I should give a shit about the opinion of the person who said anything. Not that like their opinion is more relevant than somebody else's, but in the sense that they actually had some weight on the platform. But this is not the case anymore. Verification means nothing anymore. But then they post a video with a familiar face. Oh boy. We know who this man's is around here. We've been covering this dude for six years. Guys, this is Steven Anderson. And Steven Anderson is the leader of the new independent fundamental Baptist cult. He's not an NIFB preacher. He is the NIFB preacher. He is the dude who you need to look to and point to when you are asking yourself, hey, how bad can this be? How bad does this get? The answer is Steven Anderson. Let's take a listen to uh, this, um, as, as it says in here, this, this bulletproof argument. This bulletproof argument against gay people, I guess? Let's look at the historical angle. Yeah. Let's go back and look at all the ancient Greek literature that deals with homos, and it's all centered around pedophilia. Okay, so here's the thing. Ancient Greek literature, why do we give a shit? about ancient Greek literature when it comes to homosexuality. Who cares? Am I an ancient Greek? Are you an ancient Greek? Neither of us are ancient Greeks. Why does this matter? Well, you know, you talk about ancient Sparta and you could talk about Plato and his writings and things. Look, it doesn't matter what you look at. Homosexuality has always had pedophilia as part and parcel of that lifestyle right. historically. Okay, so also historically speaking, if we're talking about people in those cultures, everyone, everyone engaged in things like child marriage, selling of children, and also, and most importantly, the arranged marriage system. We frown on pedophilia a lot today, and rightfully so, but there are cultures in ancient times where it was considered more and more the norm. That does not mean it was a good thing then. It does not make it a good thing now. But pointing out that there are civilizations where that happened everywhere and all the time greatly deflates this argument. Because this argument that he's trying to make is that, oh, well, in ancient Greece, homosexuality was linked with pedophilia. Yeah, so was being in fucking ancient Greece. My guy. Jesus Christ, Steve. So we could start with ancient Greek literature and take that all the way until now and we got the North American Man-Boy Love Association and we can look at the different... So what he's doing is he is taking individual anecdotes and using them to color everyone who is in the LGBTQ community insofar as that's even technically a community. So going like, ah, look, look at this North American Man-Boy Love Association, a pedophilia and pedestrian advocacy organization in the United States that tries to abolish age of consent laws, right? So he points to that and then tries to say, oh, this is indicative of the whole. Now, there's a fallacy at play here. There's the fallacy of composition. Are there some people who are LGBTQ and are predators? Absolutely. Just like there are some people who are cishet white who are predators, or cishet black, or cishet Asian, or cishet anything, and aren't part of any part of the alphabet mafia, whatever you want to call it, I don't give a shit. It doesn't matter, because there are people of every race, creed, and color who are predators. It is not indicative of being part of any of those groups that you yourself will be one. Rainbow Brigade, yep gay rights movements in the 70s and in the 80s and look at what they said their stated goals were and you know one of their biggest goals is always lower the age of consent well hold on though that is the eight uh, gay activism and sexuality of minors in france and quebec so he's grabbing a singular isolated movement from France and Quebec, a singular organization from the United States. My God, these are a lot of cherries. 
These are a lot of cherries. But if you look historically at the people who are more willing to lower the age of consent here in the States, where we live, so this is where we should be citing most of our evidence, the age of consent lowering conversation almost always happens in one of two areas, far right-wing Republicans and libertarians, who also tend to favor right-wing not all the time, but a lot of the time. Those groups tend to favor lowering the age of consent more often than any other fucking group. But by all means, cite individual outliers that don't actually matter and are not indicative of holes. Uh, so if we look at the history, it points to the fact they're pedophiles. I like how he keeps on saying if we look at the history, but he never actually talks about the history. He just states a thing that happened and never contextualizes it. Isn't it great? Then we can look at it statistically. Yeah, right. Open homos account for 40% of pedophiles. So let's see here. This is from the Family Research Institute. Now, if memory serves, I could be wrong here. I'm fairly certain I remember. What is this? Do, do, do. The Family Research Institute. Ah, yes, this place. The Southern Poverty Law Center actually has an entire thing on this, pointing out that they often make false claims about the LGBTQ community based on discredited research and junk science. The Institute is... Ba the intention is to dehumanize LGBTQ people as the organization battles against LGBTQ rights. In the past, this included stances against same-sex marriage, hate crime laws, anti-bullying programs, and the repeal on the military's Don't Ask, Don't Tell policy. That's from the Southern Poverty Law Center. So, while sometimes you can point to it being the genetic fallacy to point at the origin of a research paper, I think it's very safe to say that any research that comes out of somewhere like the Family Research Institute or Family Research Council or from the Heritage Foundation or any of these places that are known to have this kind of bias and do not get their research published in accredited journals... I think it's safe to say that most of the research coming out of them is bullshit. Oh, but don't worry, don't worry. It's a bulletproof argument, guys. It's bulletproof. It only uses tainted fucking research. Even though they're only 2% of the population. By the way, do you notice the dog whistle he just did? Did, did, you, did you catch it? Did you catch it? Because I caught it. If I say, despite making up only 2% of the population, if I just change that to, despite making up only 13% of the population, then suddenly we're talking about black people and violent crimes. We're just doing the 1350 meme, but it's, it's about gay people now. God, sometimes it's not a whistle. Sometimes it's a foghorn. The math's not adding up, folks. 2% of the population that are open sodomites are 40% of the pedophiles. That means that a homo is 20 times more likely to be a pedophile. The archives of sexual behavior also confirmed a stark imbalance between homosexual and heterosexual child molestation. It found that sodomites were vastly overrepresented, with 25% of the offenders being homosexual pedophiles. Right, so there's another angle that you have to check here because what we are doing now is we are looking at correlations and trying to tr uh, find causation. Aether88, thank you for redeeming your points that got converted into a fucking ooh, ooh because of that. Um, so, hi, Hylia. How are you doing, child? What is happening here is we are seeing correlations between uh, people who are homosexual and people who engage in predatory activity. Now, what we're not seeing is a why. The fact that there are more people who are homosexual who are representative in these particular groups and circles does not necessarily mean that the homosexuality is the cause. To claim that it's the cause would require several other steps in research, but that's not what gets shown here in the archives of sexual behavior. Not to mention... Not to mention, some of the earliest studies we have on this that have tried to make these claims have some weird idiosyncrasies about them that I think we should look at. Uh, one of them is an argument about how pedophilia either doesn't exist in women or is extremely rare. 
You know, just like how we had research that said that autism can't exist in women, or women can't have strokes. A lot of our research that talks about this, that makes these particular links, tends to have these kind of biases and flaws. What we need is an actual causal link, but we don't have that. We've never had an actual causal link between homosexuality and predatory behavior towards minors. We just don't. You know, there's a report that was done in 1987. It's called Self-Reported Sex Crimes of Non-Incarcerated Paraphiliacs. You say, what's a paraphiliac? It's a pervert, okay, it's a sodomite, all right? They like to hurt family members and non-family members. Whenever they're hurting family members, if the, if the target... So this doesn't sound like how you talk about a study. When you're talking about a study, you need to go into the methodology of how the study was used, the ways in which the study has been cited, and you need to talk about as well the conclusions of the study. Just saying random shit offhand about it is very irresponsible. But, you know, let's see what he says. It was a female, the number of times they hurt this child, okay? When it's a female, is 81 times. When it's a male, it's 62 times. So when it's in the family, apparently the females, they get it a little bit worse. But when it's a- Okay, so that doesn't tell us anything except that victims look for convenience. Not victims, but like, uh, predators look for convenience. Yes, most people who engage in crimes against people in this way, most people who commit sexual assault, do them on their family. They do them on the people who are around them because those are the people they know how to manipulate. Those are the people they know how to silence. Those are the people who they know what established power dynamic they have with them going forward. They're the ones that they also are more likely to have an established power dynamic with. That doesn't tell you anything other than what we already know about the fact that most abuses, sexual or otherwise, happen within families. Terrible information, but it's true. That doesn't tell you anything about gay people, and it's most certainly not what I would call bulletproof. Let's look at the his- I'm curious what the quotes on this are. There are three quote tweets on this. Oh, and they are all from the same motherfucker. June is shame month. Ta tried to warn y'all. Don't say gay. Here, have a video. Maybe you can listen. Here you go, let me know if you need more studies. Again, the studies that they're... He doesn't actually link any studies, by the way. No studies have been linked. Just a couple of screenshots. Just, just a couple of screenshots yanked from the video itself. Probably screen grabbed from the video. I guarantee you this motherfucker hasn't read a single one of these studies. And then, of course... They keep on... This, every single quote tweet is them quote tweeting themselves. This is insane behavior. This is not the behavior of any one person who is normal. This is not the behavior of somebody who is actually engaging in discourse for the sake of educating others. This is somebody with an obsession. Also, Jassa, thank you for redeeming your points for an... Fuck you, it's got converted. I hate you. Oh, well. Screenshot study, basically the same thing. I remember learning that from the tube you. Uh, da 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 turny, turn a pocket knot. Oh, hey, I pinged you to this. Yes, actually, uh, we are covering it today. I did find it from the Twitters as you threw it at me. So thank you for that. But going through here, going through all of this, so, or you just take God as his word. I could go through every unhinged take this person uses when they link their own video and then, of course, oh, wow, just more more quote tweets, all from the same person, except, like, those two we found. Again, this is, this is not the behavior of a well-adjusted individual. This is not the behavior of a person who's been socialized for even a, a, a modicum of a time. This is the behavior, by and large, of not just a single individual, but a group of individuals who are obsessed to the nines to demonize people they don't like. Makeru says, Sirus, how are you not fuming right now? I'm barely keeping my composure. Well, a couple of reasons, Makeru. For one, I've been dealing with the NIFB for years. So I'm not 
I, I'm, I'm very well adjusted to dealing with their flavors of bigotry. Nothing they do or say surprises me anymore. The fact that I used the NIFB as an actual, like, video response to Onision years ago, uh, this... I've been dealing with these fuckers for a long time. Um, I've talked with people that are in that organization before, like fucking Matt Powell. I've dealt with this shit for far, far too long. Jasper Roxy's The Nines. Do you know the term dressed to the nines? That, that, that's what I'm referencing. Um, the other thing is I have a royal flush of privileges at my side. I am a cis, heterosexual, white guy in the American South. Every single advantage life could have handed me outside of, you know, the biological disadvantages I have with my back and knees, all of those were handed to me on a silver platter. While I may have a lot of friends who are gay, who are trans, uh, who are part of just various letters in the LGBTQ, I myself am very thoroughly insulated from this. That's why I can talk about it without getting hurt as much, because it doesn't affect me directly. And the fact that it doesn't affect me directly does position me in a way that I can cover stuff like this more often. Now, there are times where it breaks me. Uh, remember when I had Nova over at my house covering uh, Brianna Gay? Uh, when, when I covered that situation, that broke me, because I had a good friend of mine, Nova, who is trans at my house and it it made it hit home much 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 closer that time but nine times out of ten i am insulated from it and the one tick i have that may drop me into the lgbtq is my demisexuality but there is another benefit to being demisexual being demi is fucking invisible there is no way to tell when demisexuality is manifest in a person. So the one tick I have that could lead me to getting some flavor of discrimination here is incredibly invisible. I It makes it very easy to pass through in that way. So... That's why. I have layers of insulation. And that's not a great thing. Because I talk about this type of shit all the time. It does still wear on me, but it's not as bad as it could be. I don't get emails telling me I need to die for being this way. I get emails telling me I need to die for supporting people who are this way. But let me know what you think in the comments section below. This is par for the course, as per usual, with the NIFB. We have gained no new knowledge here. We have only learned new ways to be depressed about our fellow man. Hit the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, everybody, insert into video tagline here.